Okay, Brain Awareness Week, day 7. I uh, saved a more complicated one for last. I think we should talk a little bit about the cranial nerves. And you can ask me what cranial nerves are. Thanks for asking. Okay, cranial nerves, nerves that provide sensory input to the brain coming in from your body. Nerves that provide motor commands to muscles so that, for example, you can move your face and have facial expressions. And some cranial nerves do both. Now, if you really want a lot of information about cranial nerves, then of course you should read a textbook. But let's do a very quick overview. The first cranial nerve, you can't see on this model of the brain stem, you have to look at the bottom of the brain. Okay, so for the record, here we have the bottom of the brain. Here we have the brain stem. There we have the pons, that's this thing. Here we have the medulla, that's this thing. So just so you can orient yourself for this model, which I will use in a second. Here at the bottom, you have two cranial nerves. This is they, they come in pairs, and this is cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve. This is a very simple one. It carries information that is olfactory, in other words, smell information, comes in through your nose, a couple of steps, and then olfactory bulbs, and then that smell information is carried into your brain, and it's processed further. That's cranial nerve number one. Cranial nerve number two. You can see it quite nicely on this model. These two things sticking out. That's the uh, optic nerve, so you get information coming in from the eyes. Now, it's actually quite a complicated wiring scheme because part of the information from your uh, right eye goes into the left part of the brain and part of the uh, right eye goes to the right side of the brain. Let's not get into those complicated matters. These are the optical nerves. Okay, and they just carry that. They, they carry information from your eyes into your brain, so this is a sensory nerve as well. Very nice, here you can actually see the pathway, the uh, optic nerve becomes the optic tract and how that actually reaches the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, but that's a different story. Cranial nerve number three, cranial nerve number three you see there, these two things sticking out there. The oculomotor nerves, and they move a number of the eye muscles so that you can move your eyes uh, not left to right, that's a different one, not sort of a strange torque that you can sort of rotate your eyeballs a little bit, that's another cranial nerve, we'll get to that. But these are the other uh, muscles of the eye that allow you to move your eye, as well as the muscles on the inside of the eye, because don't forget, you can move past inside of your eye as well, right, to, to accommodate your lens, for example, to focus on things that are up close and things that are farther away, or the... Um, um, constriction and, and, and um, dilation of your pupil, right? That's another thing that, that needs to be done through muscles inside the eye. That's cranial nerve number three. For the record, there are 12, so that's why I'm keeping this short. Number four is interesting and unique because it comes out from the back. The, uh, the fourth one is the trochlear nerve, and the trochlear, trochlea, actually is a pulley, and I don't have a good eye model here, um, but there is a specific uh, muscle, the superior oblique muscle, which is kind of on top of the eye and that sends a tendon through a, almost a little pulley uh, in, the, um, in the, the skull. Anyway, that, that cranial nerve connects to that muscle which allows you to kind of torque your eye. You can check this out if you, if you look at yourself in a mirror and you move your head around, right, up and down to the sides, your eyes keep sort of focused on the same side and they can even move, they can like like torque a little bit and that is through that cranial nerve. Cranial nerve number five is a big one, you see it here and you see it there, now that's the trigeminal nerve and the trigeminal nerve is very important for uh, facial sensation and it also controls your muscles of mastication, so in other words you're, you're chewing, right? That's number five. Number six is right there this pair, the abducens nerve. Abducere is Latin for abduct, and this controls the lateral rectus muscle muscles of your eyes, which allow your eyes to move from side to side. So as you can see, there's a lot of cranial nerves involved in your eyes, right? Like the, the movement and the control of your eyes, which is kind of interesting. 
Then you have number seven. Now this is a pair, so you can see there's a couple of nerves uh, kind of in a, in a row there. Maybe a little overexposed. Let me see if I can make that a little darker. So the frontmost one of that is cranial nerve number seven, and that's the facial nerve. The facial nerve is important for pretty much all the muscles in your face that you use to make expressions, to, to express emotion, uh, looking anger, looking happy, looking sad, these kinds of things. It also innervates the uh, frontmost two-thirds of your tongue. And, um, yeah, what else can you say? Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Now, right behind that is a two-branched nerve, the vestibulocochlear nerve, which innervates two things, the vestibular system, which is what gives you your sense of balance, right? And then there is also, and that you may know that thing is housed in your ear, right? Your vestibular system. And then there's also the other branch, that's the cochlear branch of that nerve, which innervates your cochlea and that allows you to hear. That's the structure in your ear that allows you to hear. So, facial and vestibular cochlear, facial and vestibular cochlear. What else do we have? Um, well, we have a little set of three nerves there. Um, the, uh, so the vestibular cochlea, that was number eight. Number nine, at the top there, uh, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which um, innervates the, the back of your tongue. Remember what I said, the facial nerve is the frontal two-thirds of your tongue. The final back end, the one-third at the back of your tongue, that is the glossopharyngeal nerve. And it does some other things as well. It has pharyngeal in there, so it also controls, to a degree, your, your pharynx, which is, let's just say, that's a part of your throat. I'm just trying to keep things really, really simple, right? And that means that I'm oversimplifying a little bit. Okay, then you have number um, 10, which is a big nerve. That says big things sticking out the side here. That's the vagus nerve. And uh, the vagus nerve uh, does all kinds of things. It, it controls your... Um, some, some uh, sensation in your neck, for example, but also goes all the way down to organs, hence vagus. Vagira is Latin for to wander with an A. It wanders all the way down you know, to your heart, for example, to, to other organs to, to provide parasympathetic input. And then below, so that would be a rest or digest type things, right? Calming your body down, basically. And then here at the bottom you have the accessory nerve, sometimes known as the spinal accessory nerve. That's uh, cranial nerve number 11. Um, that one is important for specific neck muscles. Yeah. And then the fun fact, these two together, the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve together make up for the sensory aspect as well as the muscular aspect of the gag reflex. So when a big object hits the back of your throat, you gag, that, that consists of two things. You need to sense that there is a big object there. And the second thing is, of course, you need to have a motor response, which is the actual gagging. So that's, that's um, those two nerves. And then finally, you have this one at front, at the front here. It's a bit more anterior. Uh, that is the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal, right below the tongue. Uh, that is a nerve that is very important for the movement, the actual physical movement of the tongue. There you have it. This is definitely a simplification of what all the cranial nerves do, but at least you've seen them once now. And if you ever have to see a neurologist, a neurologist will do all kinds of tests to see if your cranial nerves are working. Like, can you follow my finger? How many fingers am I holding up in different fields of your view? Um, can you stick out your tongue? Can you um, look sort of medially down? That's a nice test of the um, um, trochlear nerve, for example. Uh, can, you, can you look to the center down? Can you follow my finger, etc. All these kinds of things. So, that's it. Cranial nerves. Hope this was useful. Hope this was interesting. And I think that concludes Brain Week, doesn't it? More next year.